Happy Valentine's Day! Well, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Divine Fellowship. Pastor Phil, Pastor Janice. Home version. But we answer to just about anything. Yes. I've been married a long time, and <laughs> a good portion of that has been pastors for the Divine Fellowship. Yeah. So we've been married 10 years. And we've oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, so 33 years for us and 23 years for the church. Wow. Yep. Amazing. Hi, Susan. Yes. So, hope all is doing well this week. Um, yes. For any of you that are just now starting to tune tune in. Uh, hi, Tammy. Um, we just had our winter and are <laughs> still having it. So, snowing again this morning. Yeah, snowing again this morning. I don't know. It depends on where you are in the Tri-Cities. Tri-Cities? Tri-Cities. It just kind of depends on where you are. We had, you know, almost a foot already. So it's like, ugh. That's a lot of snow. Yeah. Hey, Brock. Hello. And family. And family. And Marlena. And Ed. And Tammy. We said, I said hi to Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Yes. Again. Tammy again. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, Whatever. So I hope you have a lovely Valentine's yeah. Day. Don't know yeah. if you have any plans. There's not much going on. Especially, not only, to it. not only is it locked down, but it's got a foot of snow out there. Yeah. At least in our neck of the woods. So, Whatever your neck of the woods is looks like. Looks like Marlena had 11, too. Mm. So. Okay, t-shirts so and sweatshirts that you may or may not want to get and or wear or get for someone else. So, every once in a while, someone amazing comes along. And here I am. You should get that. Hi, Mary. Uh, camping, where you spend a small fortune to live like a homeless person. Yep. How do I block you in real life? In my defense, I was left unsupervised. Oh, you need that one. Don't listen to random. Just once, I want a username and a password prompt to say, close enough. <laughs> Oops, did I roll my eyes out loud? I like it. And we have a couple patron saints by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Hey, George and John. Hey, George and John. I saw somebody. Oh. Uh, John. Well, I know. Hey, Michelle. Dis distracted. John. Yes, John. Hi, John. Uh, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. Mm -hmm. What did I do? I missed that one. I was doing my prompts this morning. Mm -hmm. And George, thou shalt keep thy religion to thyself. Amen. Amen to that. Because <laughs> here's the thing. Religion is really, really important. But we're not ever going to see it the same. Ever. Phil and I don't see it the same. No, we really don't. Not exactly. But that's okay. Because it's just, it's a matter of faith. And your faith is your faith, and my faith is mine. And Trying to convince someone else is kind of silly. Fruitless. Fruitless, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, um, the strawberry... No, it's just not, it's not fruitless. It's just annoying. Oh, well, it is. It is annoying. It is. It is. Speaking of fruit, the strawberry <laughs> is the only fruit with seeds on the outside of the skin. I don't see people so, who have yeah. their seeds on the outside <laughs> of the skin. Speaking of religion. <laughs> um, things that make you go, hmm. hmm. You make me go, hmm, all the time. Yeah, I know. For a man to achieve all that is demanded of him, he must regard himself as greater than he is. Hmm. The man who dies rich dies disgraced. Hmm. Uh, Andrew Carnegie. Ooh. So he should know. I, so in other words, I presume he means obviously give it away or do something with it. Don't just. You know. uh, prejudice is the child of ignorance. Hmm. Passion and prejudice govern the world only under the name of reason. If you wish to drown, do not torture yourself with shallow water. <laughs> it's a Bulgarian proverb. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of funny. I like that. Yeah, that's funny. Oops. Ooh, Ooh almost had close. coffee everywhere. Almost. <clears throat> okay. Um, Henry David Thoreau. 
Yes, Henry, what are you If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Mm. Let him step to the music he hears, however measured or far away. We kind of believe that. Yeah, we do, because we both Are kind weird. of walk we're just to weird. different we're drummers. Different. <laughs> we're even different from me, you know, we're different from everything else, but we're, we're different. Yeah, hi Joy. Hello. Uh, and these are, this is little kids, age seven and eight. Mm -hmm. um, when, when is it okay to kiss someone? When they're rich. Oh, Pam, age seven. Pam. Kurt, age seven. The law says you have to be 18, so I wouldn't want to mess with that. And Howard, age eight. The rule goes like this. If you kiss someone, then you should marry them and have kids with them. It's the right thing to do. Kiss is such a commitment. It is. It is. Well, it is. Well, it can be, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, beer by seven-year-olds. Beer make it. This is uh, Melanie, age seven. Uh, beer makes my daddy sleepy, and we we get to watch what we want on television when he's asleep. So beer is nice. <laughs> and there's one I can't read. Um, my mom and dad talk funny when they drink beer, and more the more and the more they drink, the more they give kisses to each other, which is a good thing. Hmm. I do have one more, but I put it in a different location. There it is. You can read that? Yes. You don't have glasses. That's true. It's just the big... Um... You're going to the doctor this week, though, to get them, right? Right. Good, 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 good. At What's the it? height of the arms race, the Americans and Russians realized that if they continued in the usual manner, they were going to blow up the whole world. I'm going to read it a little bit fast. Get a little bit long. One day they sat down and decided to settle the whole dispute with one dog fight. They'd have five years to breed the best breed dog in the world, and which and which every size dog, whatever whichever size dog won, be entitled to dominate the world. The losing side would have to lay down its arms. The Russians found the biggest, meanest Doberman and Rottweiler in the world and bred them with the biggest, meanest Siberian wolves. They selected only the biggest and strongest puppy from each litter, uh, gave them uh, and gave them all the good milk. From, from all the other ones. They used the steroids and trainers and after five years came up with the biggest, meanest dog in the world they had ever seen. Its cage needed steel bars that were five inches thick and nobody would come near it. When the day came for the dog fight, the Americans showed up with a strange animal. It was a nine foot long dachshund. Waiting for that. Everyone felt sorry for the Americans because they knew there was no way this dog what could possibly last 10 seconds with the Russian dog. When the cages were opened up, the dog, the dachshund came out of its cage and slowly waddled towards the Russian dog. The Russian dog snarled and leaped out of its cage and charged the American dachshund. But when it got close enough to bite the dachshund's neck, the dachshund opened its mouth, consumed the Russian dog in one bite. There was nothing left of the Russian dog. The Russians came up to the Americans, shaking their heads in disbelief. We don't understand how this could have happened. We had our best people working for five years with the meanest Dobermans and Rottweilers in the world and the biggest and meanest Siberian wolves. Oh, huh, oh, an American replied. We had our best plastic surgeons working for five years to make an alligator look like a dachshund. See, they all just Ding. did... They all just worked too hard. They should have brought in... A French poodle, female, ah, in heat. Ah. End of story. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay. So, am I out of here? Or? No, we I were going to chat just a minute oh. about about yes, love. Oh, my love. I love coffee. Yes, that's one of the aspects of coffee. Uh, one of the aspects of love is <laughs> is um, things that you really like, mm -hmm. whether it's an activity or a thing or whatever. But one of the things that Phil and I have found over the years that helps us uh, endure <laughs> is... Good coffee. Well, that too. Oh. That too. Uh, but genuine affection for one another and kindness to, and appreciation. We appreciate one another 
takes out the trash. I appreciate it. I fix the meal. He appreciates it. We That's really helpful. And the other thing that we do is letting go of little resentments before they build. It's huge. It really huge. is. It really because is. he is not my clone. Because I have I to let not, a lot of them go. I'm not his clone. We are going to do things differently. Even if it's just changing a light bulb, we're going to do it differently. And we get to let go of all those times that it's not what I expected or not what I wanted or whatever, you know, or... Because all those stupid little thingies, I mean, like, you know, not putting the cap on the toothpaste, which she does. But, but, we, but it's one of those things that... We have our own toothpaste. So we don't worry about that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, people are just... I mean, things like that will annoy them. They won't say anything. They won't do anything. And then all of a sudden... And it breathes. It, and then it's something else. And then all of a sudden they're put together and... Good grief. Tiny little bitty nothings turn into something. It's, it's true. It's true. So letting go of those little resentments and noticing them when they're there. Because the, mm -hmm. half the time we don't notice them until we're cranky. Uh-huh. And then we're cranky with each other. Oh, there's something underneath the skin there that's festering and we got to take a look at that and clear it out. Other than the pandemic and not being able to be a part and just life in general. Just life in general. But I think a lot of us have been extra cranky lately because of the pandemic and the lockdown and all that. And I, you know, every little thing and it's like instantly go to grumpy rather than processing things as as gently or calmly as we normally would. But there is light at the end of the tunnel on that one. Yeah. So so, again, letting go of the resentments as soon as you notice them. Yeah. And if you're feeling cranky and crabby, it's probably not the other person's fault. They may have well, done something not. that triggered you. <clears throat> Can't, be. Can't be. But if you got triggered, that's your stuff, not their stuff. And maybe they didn't do it right, or maybe they were, did something imperfect or whatever. Love that compassionate acceptance and appreciation of the other person allows for that, allows space for that. So when we find ourselves cranky and grumpy, we look for the resentments and, and let them go. And pay attention, pay attention to what you do too. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I beg for your forgiveness for everything I'm gonna be doing wrong today. So am I, <laughs> you know, we're just, that's just human nature. It's human nature, so there's appreciation and releasing resentments, those are the big key things that have helped us over the years keep it keep it together. And then a whole lot of laughter along the way. That's the other really important. aspect. Yeah. So anyway, that's our tip for Sunday. For Valentine's for Day. For Valentine's Day. Hope that was a blessing for you. Go out in the snow and throw a snowball at something. It's too fluffy. You can't get a snowball. Oh, no, no, you can figure out that. Not that fluffy. You need to make a snowball for Delilah. Mm. She would chase a snowball. She would. She She's would. a goof. She'd bite it. Okay, I'm out of here. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Phil. Have fun. I will. We usually do, don't we? <clears throat> I'd like to start by reading you a prayer from our Prayer and Gratitudes book. If you would like a free copy of Prayer and Gratitudes book, it, you'll find it online at thedivinefellowship.com, and there's a little link there that takes you to uh, free eBooks. So if you would like to have a book of prayers and gratitudes, that's where you'll find it. The one this morning. <coughs> Join me in prayer, if you would, please. Loving spirit of light, my intentions guide me toward my hopes and dreams. When I feel frustrated, misunderstood, blocked, or distressed, my pain sends me reeling in another direction. I feel wounded by others, and I wound others with my words and actions. My goal is to bless, yet I cannot right now. My imperfections come to the surface and I feel out of control and out of phase with your love. Clear the wounds received and given. Restore my peace and my joy. Erase the pain that knocks me off my path. Guide me into understanding of myself and others so that I might heal fully. May it be so. In the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. And the gratitude, I'm grateful for the healing light of love. May God bless you well. So obviously our topic today is love. Lots to talk about. Um, I may stumble around a bit because I have this much 
information that I'll share with you about love. And I don't know specifically what direction I'm going to be led into, but we're going to trust the process and allow that to unfold. All right. So first of all, I want to just chat with you a little bit about, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergies. I, you know, I thought I was coming down with a cold yesterday. I was like, I never thought, I was so delighted that, oh gosh, I'm getting a cold. It was a spider because it wasn't the other thing that could be bad. <coughs> All right, so uh, love can be defined as um, deep affection, uh, great interest or pleasure, something we like or enjoy very much, or a person we love in a romantic way. And I asked the ancient ones what their definition of love would be, or what we might want to look at as far as love in our discussion today. And here's what came through. Love is the gentle expression of tender open-heartedness towards that which is held in honor or high esteem. Now, what I really like about that is this is an outward expression. The other definitions were all how I feel about something. If I have, if I have feelings of romantic love or if I enjoy that, that activity or, or that food, I love that food, whatever. <clears throat> but the ancient ones talk about this as an, an expression, a tender, open-hearted expression. How cool is that? And that's what really what it is. And when we look at love, I think sometimes we have our definition of love all screwed up. Because I think sometimes we define love by our experiences rather than the truth. And if our experiences have proved to us that love hurts, then love hurts. If our experiences prove to us that love is an effort that has to be made out of duty and obligation, that's not going to bring us the love that we want. That's not going to express the love that we want to express. Sometimes we even have a feeling, you know, God is love. And some of us have a really screwed up idea of what God is, who God is, or, or how that all works for us, whatever, however you want to define a higher power, a higher source. Because we think, well, God is vengeance. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting off on this. But anyway, here's... <laughs> Here's the thing. Let me redefine that for you. Because that's not saying that God is vengeful and God's going to get you for that. Uh, gosh, I heard that a lot when I was growing up. Go, God will get you for that. Um, I don't think that's what that means at all. Let me translate that into modern terms for you. I think what that means is don't get your undies in a wad. Unclench. I got this. So when we get all frustrated up and we think we need to have vengeance on somebody or be mad at somebody or hate someone remember this unclench god's got it when jesus is talking about love one of the things that he talks about is loving your enemies and pray for them and do good to them that's what love does. Again, it's this open-hearted expression, not because you deserve it or that one deserves it, but because I deserve to be the one with open-hearted kindness expressing itself. Because we are the embodiment of love. There's so much hate in the world. No, not, not from this direction. I can, I can shift that. Because I can be different. This is the new normal. Our new normal isn't hate. Our new normal is love and kindness. The open-hearted tenderness that expresses itself. And that's a tricky thing, is it not? You know, when Jesus was talking to uh, the multitudes, there was always the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they were always... <clears throat> trying to trick him up <clears throat> and they'd ask him a question and he would just <laughs> just crucify them actually and just blast them so they they have to shut up and and then somebody else will ask a question and he just shut them up 
because they weren't really asking a question to get information. They were asking a question to trick him. Well, one of the questions they asked him was, and was asked by a lawyer, so um, not to disparage people who practice the law, <clears throat> but generally speaking, people who practice the law have a tendency to want to um, find fault. Or we'll just leave that part alone. You can figure that one out for yourself. <clears throat> so what they asked him was, what's the greatest commandment? Thinking, well, whatever he says, we're going to catch him in it, and we can twist it back and throw it back in his face. And what does he say? Greatest commandment is love. It's love. And not just love, but it starts with loving God. Loving that higher power. Loving divine source. And it's not just, just this affection that we talked about. Because we, th we think that love has to be this affectionate feeling. No. No. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be limited to that. I don't feel like loving God right now because my body is hurting. So I can't manufacture that affectionate feeling. But this love transcends our feelings and resonates on a higher octave than that. And the love that Jesus is asking us to, to express to divine source is with our heart, soul, mind, understanding, and strength. Now, if you look in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and there's also a reference in... Um, Luke, the 10th chapter, <clears throat> I think that's the, the main ones I was looking for there. Mark 12 also, you know, one is uh, heart, mind, and soul, another was heart, soul, and understanding. But here's the thing, we, we love divine source with all of our heart, all of it, all of our soul that sacred spirit being that resides within our physical form, with all of that. And with our mind, with our understanding, we don't have to know how it's all gonna work out in our behalf, we just know that it is. And with that understanding that there is a power greater than ourselves that can and will assist us if we just ask, that's the understanding that is being asked of us and with our strength. This is a strength of character, strength of will. And what happens here is when we love God, guess what? He's loving us first. So with all of God's heart, he loves us. With all of his spirit, he loves us. And with all of his mind, all of his wisdom, all of his understanding, he loves us. And with all of his strength, he loves us. That's the greatest commandment of all is love God. Get in that connected, shifted perspective that there's this giving and receiving of love in this highest octave. And then the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so there's where snag comes in. What if I don't love myself? You don't get to not to. Um, let me say that again. <laughs> I don't think that made sense. <clears throat> when we have this love, an appropriate love towards divine source, the love for ourself grows. Self-love is this beautiful commodity that we forget. We think that we have to put everyone else first. We think that we have to make everybody happy. We think that we have to sacrifice our happiness, that God isn't happy with us unless we're suffering. That's not true. So if we can give all that up, what's left is this beautiful sweetness that we can even internalize for ourselves. So take a moment, look at your own heart right now. Make a connection to divine source and allow yourself to perceive that love given and received. He's not gonna wait till you love him and then, then maybe he'll love you back. I mean, that's kind of a distorted thought that I had as a kid. I gotta, I gotta be this perfect person and then God will love me. No, it's already there. 
And the only thing is waiting for me to perceive that love is for me to love in this open-hearted, this tender, open-hearted manner. So as you perceive divine source as a source of love, source is source of love, God is love. And there's no shifting or shadow of turning. It's just all love, all light, all the time. And this perfect love casts out fear. So we don't have to be afraid of ourselves, afraid that we can't do it or afraid whatever. That fear can set, subside. And we can approach the throne of God with an open heart, a tender open heart, not one that's that's guarded or shielded or, or damaged, but one that's open. I want to show you something. Some of you know I have a, a collection of heart crystals. Isn't this one a peach? Isn't it pretty? What's really cool is on this side, can you see the hole in it? Does it make it any less beautiful? No. It makes it more interesting, does it not? And we're more interesting when we have overcome a trauma or a difficulty. The beauty of love is love does not perceive that is a weakness. We negate the power of our love by noticing our own weakness. When the weakness isn't, isn't a weakness, because that's one more place where we can lean even harder, even stronger on divine source. We don't have to do it all. We don't have to fight so hard. Half of this work is, is a God job. Our half is to suit up, show up, be loving and kind. Be compassionate, that open tenderheartedness that's our part. And God will lead us through the rest of it. So when you feel that connection, you have that awareness of that divine source, that divine love, and you feel it coming back to you, knowing that you are loved. Hey, you're here. You're a survivor. And you're loved because of that. Can you feel that in your heart space? As you feel that in your heart space and you feel the truth of that, now that allows for this tender hearted, what did the ancient one say? I want to get the quote right. It's a good thing I wrote it down. Love is the gentle expression of tender open heartedness towards that which is held in honor or high esteem. Tender, open-heartedness. We can be tender and have open-heartedness, can't we? Even to ourselves. I think we're hardest on ourselves. Don't we beat ourselves up? Some of the things we say to ourselves, we wouldn't say to a dog. But we say them to ourselves. Especially when we are frustrated. And we talked about letting go of resentment. Phil and I, you know, that's we work at that day-to-day, minute-to-minute thing. But it's also true to let go of resentments that we hold against ourselves. I should have done this. I should have done that. I could have done this other thing, and I didn't. Let it go. Because you're here for a reason. You've come this far for a reason. And let spirit lead the rest of the way, divine source, in that tender, open-hearted, lo loving aspect. Allow yourself to perceive that on a whole new level. This is love in a higher octave than we're used to. We're used to, I can love you if you uh, have the same political beliefs that I do. I can love you if you have the same religious beliefs that I do. I can love you if you love me back. I can love you if you treat me a certain way. I can love you if, if this or that or the other uh, character 
characteristic is is fulfilled in, in my perspective. No, that's not what love is. Love is this tender, open-heartedness. And we can do that. We are already doing that. We forget, especially when we can't hug. Oh my gosh, I am so missing hugging everyone. It's just crazy. I think, oh, I don't think I can wait much longer before I get a chance to hug a whole bunch of people. I'm gonna have a hug fest next time we're back at church. Be warned, be warned. <clears throat> so we can do good to others from a kindness, not because they deserve it or because they're, they're perfect or they're, they think the way I think they should think. No, because of our own tender open-heartedness. That's love, that's love. Everything else is an expectation. And expectations lead to disappointments and frustrations and aggravations. Fill is fill. But I'm going to love you no matter what. And sometimes, fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> Just, oh, it grates on my nerves. Last night we were watching television. <coughs> Actually, he, we were, he was, I was working on the message and he was, uh, had his headphones on and was watching car repair shows whatever and he didn't realize it because he has noise blocking headphones but he was rubbing his feet together he was wearing crocs lined crocs and so and that went on for over an hour and i finally thought why am i suffering <clears throat> the dog would just start to settle down and then he'd, <laughs> he'd jar her awake and whatever <coughs> Excuse me. So I tapped him on the shoulder and said, Honey, you can't hear it, but you're squeaking your shoes. <laughs> You've been squeaking them for a while. Can you, like, not do that? And so he said, Oh, sure, sorry, sorry. A few minutes later, er, er, er. Honey, you're squeaking again. <laughs> I could have let that be an aggravation, and I could have let that be a resentment. I could have. Phil was just doing Phil stuff. He's ADHD. He can't sit still to save his life. Can't. But I could ask him to be aware of that. So then he could move his feet, but they had to be apart so they didn't squeak on each other. Shoes didn't squeak on each other. He's going to be Phil. He's going to do stuff that aggravates me. That's just nature of life. That's nature of love. But letting it fester and letting it Oh, he's just a mean person, or he's just a terrible person for doing that. Oh. I have the responsibility to speak up for myself because I'm coming from this place of, I love me too. And I, I appreciate quiet when I'm trying to study. So that's my responsibility to speak up. But I don't have to speak up in anything other than this open, tenderheartedness. Do I do that all the time? No. Sometimes I wait too long and I'm too aggravated. Then apologies are necessary. But coming from this place of tender open-heartedness allows a broader scale of love than the highest octave. Allows me to be aggravated and sweet at the same time and not hold it as, as this festering judgment against me or against him. There's something wrong with me. I shouldn't be aggravated. I'm aggravated. Face it. Ask for help. And he was gracious enough to, to supply that. If he hadn't, I would have gotten up and gone into another room. I don't have to suffer if I want to. Most of our suffering is self-induced. Because having a tender heart for myself requires me to take care of me as best I can, as best I can. So let's do a guided meditation, shall we? <clears throat> <clears throat> and let's just soak in some good love energy, this open tenderness from divine source.
So take a deep breath in and just center into your body. Just relax, just be here. There's no thing you have to do, no responsibility that you have to do. Right now, here you are. And if there's something that catches your attention that requires uh, your immediate attention, you can handle it. But if that's not happening, let it go. Let it go. <sighs> Feels good just to be here, doesn't it? <clears throat> and now, you've already connected in, already tapped into some of that divine love. Let's do that again. From your heart space, open your crown chakra and open to a portal above your head that is specific for you today. Perhaps it's the yellow portal or the golden portal or the green portal or blue portal or iridescent portal or copper colored. Whatever color portal is right for you for today is the portal that will open for you. And what this will do is this will specifically tap into an element of the divine nature of God, the divine nature of spirit that your soul would be blessed with today. So as you tap into that, this living light of love and that specific harmonic is going to flow down into your brain, into your mind, through your portal, your crown chakra. And as it flows into your mind, let it touch your mind and let it heal. If there's any resentments and bitternesses or sorrows or loss or fear, all of that sort of thing, that's not divine in nature. It's human. We do that sort of thing. We don't have to stay stuck in it. Let this living light of love bathe your mind and allow us to receive this wonderful energy that is given from open tenderheartedness, compassion. And let that living light of love now touch your eyes, your, your discernment centers above your eyes and your occipital lobes. This is how we perceive our world. This is how we perceive our experience of life. And if our perception filters are stuck on it's got to be hurtful and people are out to get me and it's not good, I'll never be happy, then that's what we're going to see. But let this bathe those discernment centers, your eyes, your perception, your spiritual perceptions, and let them turn that harmonic to this open tenderheartedness. And feel a gentle energy wash over you. Feel that gentle energy wash through these circuits, allowing a higher level, a higher octave of love to come into your awareness that's never been here before. And now let this living light of love and this specific harmonic that's in the highest octave possible for uh, human awareness, let it touch your ears, your mouth, your throat, and your, your communication circuits so that you can hear love in a new way. You can perceive love and you can speak love with this tender open-heartedness. Allow more and more of this living light of love to touch your heart space, flow down into your hands so that everything you do I was going to be touched with this living light of love in this specific harmonic for you today. Let it flow through the rest of your body. Let it touch all your organs and systems and tissues so that it brings healing and a higher level of awareness even through your physical form. Down your legs, down to your feet, and open the portals in the bottoms of your feet, and all of this energy washes through you now. And as this is whooshing through you now, it's doing a good clearing job. And all the energy that is not in alignment with this harmonic is washed away. And it's just energy. It's just going to go into the earth. The earth is going to transmute that and send it back out to be used as usable energy. So you can let it go. 
And the other blessing is when, as we clear, and as our energy field around us, our aura also clears, then this clear energy of love is anchored into the, the physical plane. This highest octave of love in this specific harmony for you today, this specific harmonic, is registering into the earth. And the vibration of this earth is shifting because of you. What a gift. Thank you for being a conduit of this loving energy. And now gently, gently, gently close the bottoms of your feet. Stay open. More and more love and light is going to flow through you as we walk through our guided meditation. But in our meditation today, I'd like you to find yourself on a beach. Beautiful tropical beach. And it's, it's just you. And the beach is this expansive area of beautiful clean sand, gentle waves coming in, going out, coming in. And allow yourself to stand where the waves touch the sand so that they'll wash up over your feet and then back away. Washing up over your feet and then back away. And as this water washes over you, you have a deep sense that there's more to this water than just water. And you realize that this is also flowing in the same harmonic of love, washing over your feet and pulling away. And this does an additional clearing of your energetic fields. And this does it on the, on the ethereal realms. So maybe there's some sorrows and pains or difficulties or frustrations that you have inherited energetically from your family. Or maybe this is just old, long-standing uh, viewpoint of your own worthlessness. And you can allow that to wash away in the light of the truth of who you really are, which is love. So let this wash your spiritual form, even on the etheric levels. And it feels beautiful. Notice the sun shining. Is there, is there a, a breeze? Is this a balmy breeze that you're experiencing? Is there fragrances being carried on this breeze? Plumeria, perhaps, or orchid. Just be aware. Maybe it just feels, smells fresh. Maybe you can smell the ocean. And as you continue to walk along this beach, you're going to see there's something in the sand just ahead. And as you, as you get closer, you're going to notice this object and you're going to reach down and pick it up. So which do you pick up? Do you pick up a conch shell, a starfish, or sea glass. Whichever you choose will have spiritual significance for you. A conch shell, a starfish, or sea glass. As you pick this up, you realize it has deep spiritual significance for you. And so you, you treasure it. You feel honored by it. And as you're experiencing that energy of honor and receiving that honor, being blessed by it and being worthy of it. You look out into the ocean and you'll see something swimming nearby. Do you see a whale? Do you see a dolphin? Or do you see a shark? Now, sometimes we think sharks are a bad thing. In this spiritual significance, it's not. So don't judge, just perceive. Do you see a whale, a dolphin, or a shark? Now, if you don't see anything, pick one. Pick something, call something to you, and you'll see it arrive and acknowledge you in return. See it in your mind's eye. You have the power to create that. So whether you perceive it as a gift from spirit, a spiritual symbolic item that has shown up for you, or you choose it for yourself, it's still coming from spirit and is still an honor and a gift from divine source to you. So 
allow yourself to continue wandering on the beach. And you notice there's palm trees that are <clears throat> nearby, a cluster of palm trees. And as you get closer, there's, there's even palm trees that are leaning and some are really tall. And it just feels so comfortable just to be there. So go and lean up against this palm tree. Yeah, palm trees are usually kind of prickly, but you can lean up against this one in your guided meditation and not have any discomfort whatsoever. You just feel the gentle caress of this palm tree. And it feels so gentle. And you know that it weathers the storms and it's very gentle. It, it gently moves in the breeze and it grants you the energy of, of being stronger so that you're, you can utilize this strength to bless yourself, bless others, and acknowledge divine source on a higher level than ever before. And as you're noticing that, and you feel this deep gratitude within your heart, within your being, and you realize that you would like to leave a gift or a blessing. If you leave a blessing, that blessing could look like allowing the energy to run through your ethereal body and placing your hands on the, on the tree. And this grounds this intense, open, tender-heartedness to be gifted to the world. And it will find expression in your world. If you'd like to leave a gift, perhaps it's a symbolic object or a word thought or a feeling. Whatever that is, just leave it there. Leave it there. And take stock again now. Your ethereal form is clear. Your physical form is clear. You're perceiving love in a higher octave than ever before. And you are resonating at a harmonic that is in line with divine source. And it feels beautiful. And keep that energy in your awareness. Bring it with you as you walk back up the beach, past the gentle surf, back into the here and now, back into your physical form, back into this room, back into your life. Bringing that energy completely back with you. Take a deep breath in and exhale and really lock that into your physical form. And notice that every cell of your body is now vibrating at this higher level of energetic harmonic. I want to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Get that energy through your whole body and completely present in this moment. And you probably feel better and more refreshed than you have in a long time more blessed, more connected, more aware. So let me do communion with you, and then I'm gonna go over the meanings of your guided meditation. So Mr. Phil, if you join me up front, please. Keith Coleman. You know, one bad thing about <clears throat> going back to the church, you won't be able to wear your sweats. I know. Oh, I probably could. That's good. Sure, why not? <laughs> Communion. This is, excuse me, vitamins. <clears throat> Sorry. No, communion. <clears throat> communion. <clears throat> this is a reminder of the love that is available to us. This is a reminder of the well, We do need to kick in the butt sometimes to be reminded. Boy, don't we? I know I do. So, join us in prayer. Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for this new higher harmonic of love that's been gifted to us today. Help us to take it in, breathe it in, and live it. Just as we're taking this into our body, it's to take in this new love. In the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Join us in prayer again, please.
loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. And let us drink it in with love, this tender open-heartedness. Help us just perceive and move through our life with this new energy and bring us grace. These things we pray in the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. I just had a thought. I'm being, of course, with me crunching. Yeah. Getting away from. Yeah, I remember growing up, I think I've told maybe the story a little bit. Um, as a child, I was in parochial school for many years. Uh, went to church every morning, so church six days a week, which included Sunday. Interesting. And I remember that I was told <coughs> um, that uh, when you take communion, you need to be respectful. And I, okay, right, I got that. But you were never supposed to chew or anything. You're always supposed to just have the wafer dissolve on your tongue. Mm -hmm melt and they gave me all the reasons for that I call hooey I just do because I don't think God cares that much so. God loves us with this tender open-heartedness that I think he can handle the fact that you're consuming this I, with the intent of love and joy yeah. and so hooey just to be silly oh well I think love has a lot of joy in it. So I want to show okay. one more. Can I can I oh, show gosh, one yeah. more heart? You have lots of hearts. I do. This is particularly pretty. Is that pretty? I don't even know what this is. I should I should have kept the shoulda coulda woulda. There's a little hole in there and <laughs> you can see my red mm -hmm. shirt through. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> isn't that pretty? That one's a prettier one. How many hearts do you have? I don't know. Maybe dozens, many, yeah. do, many dozens of hearts. A display like case plus a few. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so. All right. Okay. So uh, Phil's going to go check the. Um, I am, and um, Beth already put up there about donations. Oh yes. Oh, you know, we still do have a building. Um, one Someday day. we'll be we, back. We will be back. It's we'll been. Be back. It's been real close to a year. Actually, it's been I think eleven months. Right now, about about at eleven months. <laughs> I wow. miss. I miss you all wow. so much. So okay, not, so if you have... Not until everybody... We can be <coughs> sure that everyone will be as safe as possible. Yes, we so. want. That's more important than what I prefer. Yeah. All right. So if you have a question about your guided meditation, type it in, send it to the, the Facebook here. Bill's going to get online and check that for me, and I'll get him on the speakerphone, and I'll do my best to give you the interpretation. Before you do that, Phil, I'm going to read what... Uh, some of this interpretation already is okay so <clears throat> if you on your guided meditation if you picked up the conch shell <clears throat> whatever you picked up relates to what you're ready to receive right now and if you picked up the conch shell you're ready to receive the call your spiritual calling and this this is letting you know you're ready to receive this higher level of courage, hope, will, and knowing to follow the calling when it comes. How beautiful is that? Did you receive the starfish? If you picked up a starfish, you're ready to receive healing energy for yourself and others. This is just such a great time to learn healing modalities because we have the time to do them to focus on ourselves. Uh, I'm hoping to do a workshop here before long about some healing stuff. More to come on that. <clears throat> but you're ready to receive more healing for yourself and for others. And if you picked up a um, sea glass, you're ready to receive more spiritual, si spiritual insights on a higher level. So more insights are coming for you. You're ready. You're ready for it. The, uh, whatever you noticed that was swimming in the, in the ocean relates to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what you're ready to remember, what you're bringing back into your awareness that maybe life's challenges has prompted you to forget or shut down. So if you, if you saw a whale, you remember, you're, blah, 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 
if you saw the whale, you are ready to remember your soul song. We all have this soul song that our soul is always emitting this energy. What is yours emitting? And when we live that, then we change our world and we change the world. So you're ready to remember that. You're ready to walk in the truth of who you really are on this higher level of awareness. Did you see a dolphin? This is reminding you that it's time to have fun. And it doesn't matter if your regular style of fun is available to you or not. Life can be fun. Life can be, you can have silly fun anytime, anywhere. But everything can be of enjoyment. This is asking you to bring joy into everything you do. And you can do that. You're ready for that. You're ready for spirit to bring it to you. And you're ready to embrace it. How about that? Did you see a shark? It would be funny to see who, who, who saw what. I'm look, looking forward to that. <clears throat> this is a reminder to let love flow through you. Sharks breathe by moving through the water. So move through life. And as you move through life, letting that love flow through you. Being the love that you are, breathing love in from that higher source, receiving it and giving it with this tender open-heartedness. That's what you came here to do. That's what you're ready to do right now in whatever capacity that looks like for you. And maybe it's just remembering to let love flow to your own self, into your own awareness, being kind to yourself. Whatever you left uh, under the palm tree, uh, your gift or your blessing, if you have any questions on that, uh, give, give, type that up and send it in, and Mr. Phil is going to give me a jingle here and see if there's anything else I can share with you. I'm getting him on the speakerphone to see if you have any questions. I might be able to answer. Hello. Um, well, you answered part of Myrna's, um, but okay. she said, uh, air raids light, starfish, orcas, whale, and grounded love into the ground. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful gift. We need that right now. We need more of that love being grounded into this earth. So thank you for, thank you for doing that gift. We all are, will be recipients of that. Okay? Who else? Uh, Terry, mm -hmm. uh, the word but with one T <laughs> kept coming up. But? I have to be in control, love. I have to be in control. More things come in, it keeps bouncing. Um, I have to be in control. Love equals pain. There is my wall. I kept telling myself it doesn't have to be, but I'll never stop trying. So... <laughs> Here's the key. You ready for this? Stop trying. Stop trying. The key is allow. Allow. Love hurts because our perception says love has to be a certain way. I have to be treated a certain way. Well, human beings aren't going to do that. Let go. Allow this higher octave, this higher resonance of love to pour in. And then you'll perceive love differently in your interactions with others. And this trying, this efforting about it, is blocking you. Love is effortless. It's so peaceful. It's so blissful. It just is. Can you for a moment, this moment, allow yourself to have a glimmer, a perspective of this ease of love? Just now, as best you can. And you'll build on that. 
And what happens is as you change your harmonic about love, people will respond to you differently. And the love that you will begin to receive will be more in alignment with this love that comes from a divine source. So be with that for a bit. This is big stuff, huge stuff. So just for a moment, as best you can, receive this love without effort, without having to fix it, without having to change it, without having to see what is that supposed to feel like. Just allow for a moment this open, tenderheartedness. You know what that feels like because you can be open and tenderhearted. You already have that quality. See it from that divine source. Come in and touch your own heart. And this will transform your whole being. So do that as best you can for now, for just this moment. See how that feels. I honor you on your journey. You're, you're at a big, huge pivot point in your life. This is big stuff. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Mr. Phil? Uh, Michelle, so I gave the tree a big hug and a kiss. Oh, wonderful. Tree hugger you. You tree hugger you. <laughs> Good for you because this tree represents the physical manifestation of this higher harmonic of love that grounded see trees are these marvelous things they are so grounded they have their roots deep in the earth and they're reaching for the heavens and that's what we're attempting to do so they're great examples of of our spiritual journey what else uh tracy had a starfish a whale and she left little Twinkly bright lights. Okay, so <clears throat> as I said before, the, the whale is about finding your soul song. It's just getting every soul, every soul, every, every whale sings its own song. It's different. So you get to be different. And you get to find that song of who you really are. And just be that. Be that. Um... And this, the starfish is about healing energy. So more healing energy coming to you and through you. So allowing yourself to experience that. Um, the twinkly lights, this is bringing light into all circumstances. Whatever you do. There's twinkly white lights if that has anything to say. Well, white is, is this purity of intent. This is open tenderheartedness that we've been talking about. And you bring that into every situation that you do. Everywhere you go, you're living this living light of love for people to experience and enjoy. So thank you for that. Beautiful, beautiful gift. What else? Uh, Sandy, divine energy came into my body with gold, small, floating, star-shaped feather dust, fairy dust. Beautiful. So let me address that real quick. So this golden is about self-worth. Who said this, Bill? Sandy. Sandy? Okay. So this is amplifying self-worth, not ego, but self-worth. Acknowledging to you your value to yourself and to divine source, to the world. And very sparkly, allowing that spark of, of light to shine in everything that you do. Was there anything else with that? No, we're good. Okay. Oh. Cut me off. I guess we're good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. It was nice to get away from the snow and into the sunshine. That felt wonderful. What? It's snowing. Is it snowing again? Yes. Oh, it is. It is. Again. So, hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Let's uh, do our energy circuit. Uh, bringing you're still connected in bringing that light into your heart space whatever harmonic that is for you today bring it to from one hand to the other hand back to the heart space what are you doing fiddling <coughs> excuse me so as you complete that circuit then energy builds between your hands you can almost feel a sphere of light being created here and this sphere of light we're going to utilize with our intent we're going to send that to someone who could use it 
Maybe there's someone in your circle of influence that can use healing or comfort or encouragement or some blessing. Did so, somebody pass this week? Oh, yes, we did. In the family. So bless them for that. So keep them in your awareness and with your intent, now send this ball of light to them. And, and wipe your hands clean. You don't want to whip, send all of that. You don't want any psychic backwash. We're going to get fresh, bright energy into the heart space. Left hand to right hand, right hand to the heart. And that completes that circuit. And again, if I was standing up with my hands down, that would actually be a heart shape. So, but we're going to do it here so you can see it in the camera. So bringing that energy in again and letting that amplify between your hands. This is divine love in this highest octave. You can feel it in your hands, can you not? Feel it growing there? This one's for you. This one's for me. Bring it into your heart space. Let it heal. Let it bless so that you can be a blessing and send it out into the world. And may your life be a blessing. May your life be a prayer. God bless you. I've got some stuff coming up that you might want to pay attention to. I'm hoping to do a free um, a seminar on Facebook on Saturday morning, about 10.30. I'll send a, a, an alert out uh, for <clears throat> how to empower yourself as an empath. There's a lot of us that are suffering as an empath during these difficult times, and I have some new techniques that have just come through that I'd like to share with you. So thanks, hopefully I'll thanks, see Tracy. you Thanks, Tracy. God bless. <laughs> I can't see what she's saying. I know. Anyway, if there's other comments on there, I'll get back onto the computer here in just a second and I'll get back to you. God bless. Love you. Toodles.